For Sean, the film has this vintage, almost 70s black exploitation film to it. <laughs> as well, um, it's very of the moment and of mm. this time too. Was that intentional to like blend those two kind of nuances? I was trying to blend several eras, but it's funny you bring up the 70s, uh, 70s cinema because I think I'm most influenced by that cinema. And um, yes. Uh, it, it was very much of a mix of old and new, and that's because we were using the iPhone and we were using so much new technology and newer music, I tried to then also give it a, an older feel of like, almost like old uh, talkies from the 30s with our, you know, the Toyland theme, and, and trying to mix a lot so that it would appeal to people across the board. Yeah, that, that does come across. I like that, it kind of like has this whimsical vintage feel to it. I'm glad that. That you caught up on, <laughs> caught on that. So, but yeah, thank you. Uh, and the Toyland rendition—that's like actually one of my favorite scenes too. Mm -hmm. You're so, you're so very vulnerable at that point. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to know: was, was there anything different that you brought to that performance on film? I know you sing, you know, on stage, you know, in regular, in real life. But was there anything different that you brought to that performance on the film that you don't? necessarily bring when you're singing on stage? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sean's gonna kill me for this, but yeah. I hated the song. <laughs> totally. I was like, this song is too slow and it's old as, like, <laughs> the Bible itself. <laughs> like, the song was really old. And, like, I thought it, it was quite a challenge because it just was. <laughs> but, you know, I got it down. You know, eventually we thought about it just um, being like a lullaby. Mm -hmm. So I had to sing it really, really soft, which is not normally how I sing a very, very powerful, really high octave range voice. And I had to sing it really, really soft. So that was quite challenging. Yeah. And you two, you and Kiki are friends in real life. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I love her. Yeah. So how, how much did that play in your relationship on screen with Cindy and Alexandra? <laughs> I think it actually made it more easier because we just like... It did. It was just like, especially when we had times where we could just do wherever, like, the child was just like, okay, we're just filming right now, and we should be sitting down talking, and then, like, out of nowhere, he'll just get something. And that's because we have this friendship, and we have this different, like, mm -hmm. this different dynamic of two, two different people and two different life and two different energies coming together as one and it's making it like, um, it made it so like easy for like a, a comedic, like you know, timing well, for whatever For was me coming. as a director it was very easy. It, it, there, were, there were times where we actually spent whole days where we didn't really have a script. We, we had beats and themes they had to talk about or hit but we, um, mm -hmm. there was one day where we just decided, let's walk down Santa Monica and, 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 and have them riff on different ideas. And mm -hmm. it was just, and I think a lot of that stuff just came from the fact that they were, truly had this connection and they were just able to speak in such a casual way. And yeah. Yeah. Basically everything there is very natural. It's how we are in actual real life. Like, so if you meet Maya Taylor, <laughs> she's like that in real mm -hmm. life. Just without being a prostitute, let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. I love the movie. It was oh, so much you. fun. It was, like, just hilarious. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>